Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Andrew Parsons at uh, Resolution Capital. We're a uh, long-only global listed real estate securities investment manager. Uh, clearly, we're waking up these days to all sorts of headlines about real estate and its place in the new tech, new age world and uh, the closure of some high profile businesses and the, the, the scarring potentially on the, the real estate landscape. But I think if we look at the longer term uh, picture, you'll see that the threats of technology have always been uh, around. It's not uh, uh, something that's only popped up in the last five, ten years with, with dare I say it, Amazon and, and uh, e-commerce. Uh, technology, or what's considered old tech today, is, was new tech in its day, going back over 100 years. And if you look back at some pretty simple examples there, things like uh, the lift, uh, which was invented uh, over 130 years ago, uh, was a way of basically increasing densification of land, going vertical with buildings, which was, at the time, people were very concerned that there was going to be a flood of office space, which would uh, therefore affect uh, existing landlords' buildings in terms of being able to compete for tenants and pushing down rents. Well, of course, that new technology was absorbed over time and adapted, and it became a way, in fact, of increasing the value of the underlying land uh, in these great locations by, again, by going vertical. Uh, things such as air conditioning, again, uh, challenged the status quo of the real estate landscape, because if you have a look back, uh, it seems simple, but it opened up new markets. For example, in the US, it opened up the South. Sunbelt, which up until the creation of the um, uh, air conditioner was deemed too hot, but you can air condition buildings, which meant, of course, you could create a whole lot of new uh, uh, spaces for business to move to. And of course, the concern was that all the tenants would move south uh, out of the likes of New York or London or wherever the case may be. But in fact, the technology was an enabler and uh, it was able to, in fact, generate a whole lot of new uh, business uh, and as a consequence, uh, an economic growth, which then in, uh, in turn, of course, creates tenant demand. So all of these things, and of course, more uh, recently and before uh, e-commerce, the, the creation of the computer itself was again supposed to replace all these workers and menial tasks. Yet we're seeing today office buildings around the world are doing uh, very well, thank you very much. So the, 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 the question that we face today, or the big challenges we face today, clearly relate to the likes of the online shopping, uh, the shared economy on, on hotels and Airbnb, uh, and also, of course, cloud computing uh, and what that, ag again, is going to do for demand for, for physical space. Of course, as I said, what we see is that the technology becomes an enabler that creates a whole lot of business demand that ultimately absorbs space. But that's not to say that there's not winners and losers. And that's the critical thing when you're thinking about your real estate exposure. Now, it may well be a case of Mark Twain's um, reports of my death have been exaggerated, but clearly for shopping centre owners, it's a case of spending a lot of time undergoing a, a thorough physical examination at this point in time, as the market is clearly having to come to grips with what e-commerce and Amazon uh, means for shopping centres. And now I'm not here to tell you today that everything's rosy in the shopping centre world, but clearly there, are, there is going to be some very high profile victims. But again, it's very important to recognise that Shopping centres have been undergoing enormous amounts of change for over 40 or 50 years. Department stores, uh, uh, you know, remember, killed, uh, in many cases, high street, uh, high street retail in the corner store. So retail goes through change, it goes through transformation, reinv reinvigoration. And today, department stores are, are clearly under pressure. But it's replaced by other growth areas, and clearly one of the, the big growth areas is food and beverage. Think back to what a food court looked like 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you would probably recall it was basically McDonald's next to KFC, next to the local independent kebab and Chinese operator. Now, today, if you go into a shopping centre, you'll find some pretty reasonable uh, offers in terms of food. Maybe not fine dining, but nevertheless, v excellent choices. And, and the likes of uh, Jamie's Italian, uh, and uh, um, uh, Guzman and Gomez uh, as examples of the better quality that you're able to get uh, in shopping centres. Uh, and coming soon, we're going to see to Australia concepts like Italy, which is very much a food, Italian food department store. It's quite a phenomenal product and uh, I think you'll see that it's what transformation means for retail. 
again, 15, 20 years ago, food was about 5% of the shopping centres. It's now going north at 15% because that's changing consumer behaviour, uh, changing consumer uh, uh, spending patterns. You know, it's also interesting that we think it's uh, also missed is that um, bricks and mortar is still a very important part of a successful retailer's armoury. Uh, called clicks and bricks or on a combination of online and e-tail, otherwise known now commonly as uh, omnichannel. Now, if you look at the list up there, it's, I think, very interesting to note what's been one of the most successful retailers in the world the last 15 years, Apple. And there's no doubt that shopping centres have been absolutely key to be able to interact directly uh, with their customers. Another one there, I think, is also a great example, is flight centres. There's a business that everybody, me included, probably thought 10, 15 years ago it was a concept that was going to go because it was so easy to go and do everything online in terms of your travel needs. Yet the company is thriving. And it's thriving because it's been one of the great success stories of the Australian retail scene, unlike a lot of other Australian retailers that have failed to invest in omnichannel, where they've recognised the importance of offering both in-store and online. And they've also highlighted time and time again, they have higher conversion rates in store than online. So they know very well that in store is still a very powerful way to do business. And then we've now got the e-tailers opening stores in shopping centres or buying businesses that have store footprints. Classic example, Amazon. Amazon are opening stores themselves and they've recently bought the Whole Foods supermarket chain in North America. So clearly there is a future for shopping centres, but I stress it's very important to recognise that it's for the top tier shopping centres where there's going to be tenant demand because they know that's where the customer goes. For anything else, if you, can't, if you don't have the customer, you're not going to get the tenant. If you don't have the tenant, you're not going to get the customer. It becomes a real death spiral. So we think we're going to see massive bifurcation in retail. The top shopping centres will do fine. They are going to go through a period of, of transition to these changing consumer patterns, but nevertheless, they're still a very powerful uh, tool for uh, retailers to do business. And again, the property market has responded. If you look at that chart in the bottom left, retail construction in the US has shut down. So in other words, retailers who want space are not going into new centres, but they are certainly focusing their attention on the most profitable existing shopping centres. And that's where we're invested. We're underweight the retail spectrum or retail sector, but certainly our exposure is to the more profitable, uh, um, uh, productive shopping centres. If shopping centres are the loser, then clearly logistics has been the winner in the last couple of years as retail, e-tail and other business goes about trying to create uh, efficiencies to do business uh, and, uh, and creating new logistics uh, uh, distribution networks. Uh, Amazon has obviously been a massive absorber of space. In, uh, they now represent about 14 million square metres of space around the world. And you can see the growth in that top slide, uh, top, uh, top right, uh, the growth that they've seen just in the last five or six years in Europe in the number of uh, um, distribution centres that they've opened. So clearly that's been a, a massive uh, a change uh, in the landscape that what was considered dull and boring industrial is now very much a vibrant and uh, uh, essential part of, the, uh, of an efficient distribution chain to meet consumer changing patterns. Again, everybody thought Airbnb was going to be the death of hotels. Yes, it's had an effect. It's clearly had a price transparency effect. No longer to, can hotels just gorge, or gouge I should say, when they're full, uh, when there's a big event on, they know that there's a release called Airbnb. But Airbnb hasn't killed the market. All it's done is it's allowed more people to travel. So it's been, again, a very important uh, uh, technology has been an important tool to enable more and more business. But as you can see, occupancy in hotels is doing very well. Thank you very much. Uh, office clearly in select markets, the technology markets, San Francisco, London, uh, Seattle, they're booming. The growth of those businesses at the bottom has seen enormous amount of space absorbed in the office space, and those uh, markets are enjoying very strong rental growth. And again, it's buildings that are adapting their, 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 their um, accommodation to today's uh, tenant needs that are doing best. Well, surprise, surprise, for anybody who thought the cloud was a mythical uh, place where data was sort of kept, it's not. 
it actually kept and, and transferred in buildings, data centres. There's been an enormous amount of growth in the data centre uh, uh, space usage over the last couple of years, and there's some exceptional uh, real estate platforms out there that are benefiting from this uh, extraordinary growth that we've heard uh, previous speakers talk about. Uh, companies like Equinex in Interaction uh, are really leading the way, world global leaders, in basically allowing the internet to connect. So for all the potential doom and gloom, how the REIT's performing, well, as you can see, arguably it's never been better. Occupancy in the REIT portfolios is at basically all-time highs, and that's because they've adapted to the changing needs of today's uh, business and, uh, and spending patterns, uh, and we're seeing record levels of occupancy. They also say that the REITs themselves have great technology platforms. They're spending money on building management to improve building management and again efficiency, leading to lower expenses for their tenants, uh, and also marketing and things of that nature. I mean, you think about storage, how it used to be marketed, self-storage, you'd have to advertise in the newspapers, etc. Now it's all done online, and like airlines, they use uh, sophisticated techniques like yield management systems. So technology has been being incorporated into the real estate operations as well uh, that's leading to exceptional performance. And capital markets react, they adapt, and the REIT market adapts to these changing needs. So you can see here how the allocation of uh, REITs was uh, 15 years ago or 17 years ago versus today. And you can see that the capital market has basically followed the socioeconomic changes to uh, have more uh, healthcare and technology related uh, REITs uh, to be able to give uh, op better opportunities uh, to investors. So again, I, I just want to stress that real estate basically is a beneficiary of change because uh, old tech is now new, or new tech will soon be old tech, but the great real estate, provided it's in the right locations and it's managed appropriately, will continue to be relevant to the changing cha uh, uh, space demands of tomorrow's tenants, and the REITs themselves have been outstanding in adapting to those changes. So on that note, thank you.